everyone, I'm Daniel Ricardo, McLaren Formula One driver. Now, this is a brand new series of McLaren Substitute Teacher. Now this is where we take homeschooling and put it onto the racetrack. So today's lesson is from Andrew and it's all about AI. Now this stuff is seriously clever. Not as clever as myself and Lando, obviously. But anyways, let's enjoy it, grab a desk and shall we begin? Hello, I'm Gemma and I'm here at the McLaren Technology Centre with this week's substitute teacher, it's Andrew. This place is awesome. So this is your office. That's right. I'm Andrew McCutcheon. I'm a senior data scientist here at McLaren Racing, which means I work up there. Okay then. So what are you teaching us today? Well, this week's episode is all about using data to build a winning artificial intelligence. I'll be explaining how machines learn and how we can use that ability to build a better, faster F1 car. Ah, so it's AI in F1 at MTC with AMC. It's very good. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> okay. So we hear a lot about artificial intelligence these days. Can you explain what that is? Sure. AI is about machines that can respond to data and then adapt. So a huge part of this is the ability to learn. It's not just a set of pre-programmed rules that simulate intelligence. The machine has to learn and become smarter all by itself. And it's all around us. Yes, AI is growing fast. And it's already beating us humans at many things, from playing games to spotting cancer, from trading stocks to forecasting the weather, even art. Here are two portrait pictures. One of these people is a real photo of a real person, and the other is completely made up, drawn by an AI. Could you guess which one is the real person? I'm going to say that this is the genuine photograph and that's the AI one. Unfortunately, this is a made up AI photo. No. And this is a portrait photo. What? And AI can get to know you. It can work out what you like and what you don't like. And that gets used in everything from your online supermarket shop to your Netflix recommendations. Ah uh, yes, drive to survive all the way. One of the most dramatic uses of AI is in the world of robotics, where it's working to create self-driving cars or personal interactive robots. Okay, well as long as they didn't start replacing TV presenters, I'll be okay. <laughs> Later on, I'll explain how you can build your own AI as part of the McLaren Maze Race Challenge. Oh, exciting. So it's not just the robots getting interactive. Okay, Andrew, how does a machine learn, bearing in mind that I can't even remember my 12 times table? Like all computing, it's all about algorithms, a list of instructions for the computer to follow. In AI, these instructions tell the machine how to extract understanding from data, and then how to use this understanding to solve problems. Typically, there are three ways that a machine can learn. First of all, supervised learning. This is where the machine is given a set of labelled training data, and then it has to learn to produce the correct output for a new test point. Basically, learning to answer a question, such as, is this animal dangerous? Or, how many cars am I going to sell next month? <laughs> the machine learns from examples until it's ready to do the job itself. So then practice makes perfect? Well, 99% perfect. Oh, so you're allowing for computer error? Oh, human error. All right, <laughs> much like me and my 12 times table. <laughs> then you have unsupervised learning, which is about looking for patterns in things. The machine must spot trends and make connections all by itself. It's let off the leash able to make its own findings or make discoveries that perhaps humans weren't even looking for. Okay, now that is clever. And finally, there's reinforcement learning, where the machine uses trial and error to find the solution, learning from the consequences of its decisions along the way. The machine must make a choice, and as it makes it, it gets either a reward or a penalty. And like any good pupil, it learns to maximise reward. That sounds like my dad's cat. It's learnt to catch a ball and then it gets a treat. Exactly. So, three kinds of learning, but which is the most important when using data in Formula One? Well, all of them. <laughs> they all solve different problems and to create the ultimate intelligence, you're gonna need them all. But if you wanna build an AI racer, then a good place to start is reinforcement learning. And to understand that, 
it helps to know the three basic concepts behind it. State, action, and reward. State describes the current situation. So in F1, that could be the speed of the car, or where you are on track, who's around you, the state of your tires, how much downforce you have. But surely F1 is all about action. Ah, and action is anything that you can do or change in your current state. So it could be the driver accelerating or braking, or the tyres that we put on the car, or the way we set the car up, or the strategy that we take. Wow, that's a lot of variables. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of different possibilities. And when the machine takes an action, it gets a reward basically feedback on what it's done, which can be positive or negative. For example, more fuel efficiency, worse tyre degradation, or a faster lap time. The holy grail of Formula One. Perhaps the simplest form of reinforcement learning uses something called a cue table. Every time we take an action, we store the state, the action, and the reward we got in a table. That way we can start to learn which actions led to good results and which to bad. Okay, so it's a reference table. Exactly, like your 12 times table. In this case, we can look up the usefulness of an action for gaining a reward. So the AI looks at the Q table, which is all the different data, and uses that to choose the best way forward. Exactly. But at this point, you come across the credit assignment problem. You see, for many problems, you only see the reward once you've completed the task. So in Formula One, it's when you finish the race and get points. But then you need to figure out which of the many actions you took along the way were actually important for getting that reward. That's particularly hard in Formula One, where you're dealing with thousands of different actions, thousands of different components, all working at the same time. So with all that data flying about, AI is a great shortcut for making the best decisions. Absolutely. Possibly the difference between winning and losing. Wading through all of those figures, working out the best and worst performances, all the different outcomes can take one of our engineers hours, days, even weeks. But an AI can do it in milliseconds. 7 times 12? 84. Oh, you are good! <laughs> So teaching a computer artificial intelligence is much like teaching children. It is, and it really boils down to the two ways that people learn. You can choose to explore or you can choose to imitate. But if you choose to explore, then you're generally facing a key dilemma known as the exploration-exploitation trade-off. More choices. I'm afraid so. In this case, it's the choice between using what you know and getting a result close to what you expect, or trying something new and perhaps learning. That is totally me in a restaurant. Do I play it safe and go for the traditional fish and chips like I had for my lunch here today? Or do I go a bit more experimental, try something different like a seafood risotto? Or perhaps there's a third option, risotto and chips. Ah oh, yes, and then the reward could be a lovely mm, raspberry pavlova. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm really beginning to like this AI stuff. <laughs> Now, before we go, Andrew, you have a challenge for us. I do, the McLaren Maze Race. Ooh, sounds exciting. What does this involve? Well, I want you to build an AI bot that can navigate through a maze, complete with offshoots, dead ends, different speed sections, as well as F1 additions such as a wet track, safety cars, DRS zones, etc. The bot has to explore the maze to find the fastest route at the same time as racing its rivals. The first bot to the finish line wins the race. This sounds like one for the coders. <laughs> to get involved, we've set up a web page that will allow you to play yourself and see a sample bot doing its stuff. It's a great way to try creating an AI for yourself. OK, so the address should be appearing on your screen somewhere around about here. You'll be able to create your own AI bot, test it out and enter it into the grand challenge. That will involve some unseen tracks where bots will race it out, score points, before we crown the overall winner. So a chance to put those AI lessons to the test. Exactly. Your AI racer will need to learn to drive a car, explore a maze and develop a race winning strategy. So there we go. Head to the website and get to work designing and educating your AI race bot. You can tell us how you got on in the comments section below or by posting on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag McLaren Substitute Teacher. Well, that's it for today. A huge thanks to our genuinely intelligent substitute teacher, 
Andrew. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be back again with more lessons in F1 science and technology. 12 times 6. <gasps> 72. Yes, it is. Oh, you really made me think then. <laughs>